Well, Mr. Sapa, very welcome to the democratic kingdom of Sweden, and may I then congratulate you to having agreed to attend this interrogation, which is necessary, as we nowadays in Sweden are more restrictive with the kind of people we let into this country. We hope you understand. Well, I understand. A beautiful country like this, you wouldn't want to have just anybody coming in. Yeah, uh, before we start this uh, interrogation, we would like to go through uh, some formal uh, details. Uh, born uh, December 22nd, 1940, Sapa Francis Vincent Jr., are these uh, correct? Uh, no, December 21, December 21. Uh-huh, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. then we have to change. Yeah, let's see, what you ought to do is look a little bit more carefully at some of the people you've hired for your uh, interrogation. Well, well, uh, well, it's well, not well, very yeah. necessary uh, yeah. for two look, look, uh, Is it possible? Is it possible that you've hired people uh, who have dark hair? Uh, maybe he's uh, uh, re- doing so the research? Some of them may have dark hair, but anyway, we have traced and detected a multitude of incorrect and dishealthy ideas and attitude from you throughout, uh, well, all of your so-called career. Mm-hmm. And therefore we are forced to charge you with the following accusation. Conrad Maxim- you could straighten yourself up a little and listen. Based upon an extreme extreme quantity of evidence we have found out that you, Mr. Sapa, under the slogan, we're only in it for the money, have tried to mobilize an arrogant crusade against morality, normal society, music and behavior, and for cynicism, perversions, confusion and disorder. Have you understood this accusation? Well, of course. Do you have any immediate comments? <clears throat> you confess? Um, No, I never confess, because that's something you'd have to do if you were a Catholic. Well, in order to guide you to your own happiness, maybe we can machete our way through the jungle of evidence that we have uh, found out by starting back in 1964, that's 24 years ago, when you were put to jail for 10 days for having produced a pornographic tape with an underage girl in order to obtain uh, money for your first uh, recording studio. Isn't that incident quite significant for the rest of your career? Well, some of your facts aren't quite straight there. First of all, it was not an underage girl, and it was not in order to uh, acquire money for my first recording studio, because I already had the recording studio, and the tape was made in the studio. Wasn't she only 19? No. According to the facts we have, she was 19. It's not necessary. It's the, it's the ingredients of filth here that we are um, busy with. I mean, it, it, answer <laughs> the question. Isn't this significant for your career? No. No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But this interest in filth just goes on and on. In Virginia Beach, 1971, the police took you and your group away after a concert for saying fuck and cocksucker, and had you had to pay a thousand dollars fine. I mean, isn't this a proof that you actually like to provoke people in public with filth? No, I was never taken away, and the amount of money that we had to bribe the police with was $1,500. Uh, but I mean, then we are talking about little details. Uh, well, we are trying but, to approach the mentality. Sure, I want to cooperate fully with the interrogation, but you know, it's very difficult when your research is so poor. Oh. Mm-hmm. But I mean, in the rest of the 70s and in the 80s, you have toured the world and polluted the world with songs like Dirty Love, I've Been in You, and other songs about sex with machines, anal sex, fist fucking, you name it. I mean, why are you such so obsessed with these kinds of subjects? Well, I only act as a reporter, delivering the information that comes into my possession in the same way that you're interrogating people. I would interrogate people to find these things out, and I provide these lyrics as a public service to those members of the community here in Sweden that are interested in fist fucking, sex with machines. I mean, let's face it, in a society like this, you need to hear about these things. You can't just export all of this stuff to the United States. I know you're up here doing it. Ah, so you are accusing Sweden of exporting such things to the United States and not the other way around. As a matter of fact, my brother lived in Sweden for a while. He gave me the complete details in this industry that you have here. Uh, what's his name? Is it Carl? No, no. Carl is still in California. It was uh, Charles Robert. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, but I mean... It, he disguised it, himself as an exchange student. 
you, you, you claim here that you act as a reporter and therefore you take away your own responsibility. I mean, actually claiming that people turn homosexual for business reasons, isn't that a bit over the top? No. I mean, you know it's no. not true. Well, I know it is true. I mean, all you have to do is take a look at the Reagan administration. Uh, or take a look at what's going on in Cuba with Castro. What has that got to do with uh, accusing homosexuals of turning gay for business reasons? Well, I'm sure that this particular regime that's interrogating right, right now must be riddled with homosexuals because that's one of the ways that you can determine whether or not a person is, in fact, gay, is when they behave in this sort of restrictive manner. I mean, this is not an opinion. But it's okay. But I mean, I don't mind if you're gay. I mean, these are nice-looking microphones. You might have a good time after the show. Looks like a telefunk in U-47, huh? Don't you think I've heard? <laughs> Could, could Mr. Gore? No, no, please? Monsieur, you, you okay. should go on about this 1986. Stuff. In an article in the Dutch magazine yes. Vinyl in 1986, you had many bad things to say about the PMRC, which is an American organization with concerned parents who try to stop violence, drugs, Satanism, and pornography in rock music. But, Mr. Sapa, try to be honest. Being a father and a parent yourself, would you like your kids to have such filth thrown in their innocent? faces? Of course. Why? Why? Because my children are so strong and so intelligent that they would just thrive on such things. They'd win their way through the filth and the corruption and come out completely unscathed on the other side. But, but, but is it something to defend that kind of stuff? I feel that pornography and violence in Well, I happen to think that the claims made by this organization in America are not based on any scientific fact. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that. I know that. Because you're a scientist yourself. That's right. Oh. Because of all the research that I've been doing. Hmm. Well, it seems like... Uh, a lot of it here in Sweden, as a matter of fact. Oh yeah? Oh yes. Could, could you, what, what do you mean with this? Have you been spying around here or what? Well, you know, I've been here many times and only certain hours of the day when I'm here am I asleep. The rest of the time I'm actually awake and I'm watching and I'm keeping my eye on the Swedes. Oh, We're yeah. keeping our eye on you, you know, we scrutinize. You know. <laughs> well, talking about Swedes and Sweden, in 1968 when you were here, you told a Swedish paper that if you became the president of the United States, uh, you would legalize drugs, prostitution and gambling. I mean, isn't it very naive to think that everything should be so absolutely free, which is the title of your second novel? No, I don't think it's naive at all. I think it's a good business decision. First of all, let's look at the prostitution. Think of the poor women who have to have sex with people like Ed Meese. What a terrible thing. You could, I mean, you know, just using him as an example, uh, uh, you could hardly pay a woman enough money to undergo such torment. I mean, we have to be concerned about the welfare of the people who provide this social service to ugly men. Who else is going to fuck the ugly men in America? But drugs, drugs for instance, you yourself claim that you're opposed to drugs and still you want to legalize it. I say that you have the right as a human being to stick anything you want into your body. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. freedom for you, of course. And, but you also have the responsibility after putting a drug or, or alcohol into your body not to harm some other human being by your actions. You must take responsibility for that. And if you fail to take that responsibility, you should be punished. Speak, speaking about precedence, as we did just now, um, you have always had a very negative and arrogant attitude all kinds of politicians. I mean, don't you believe in democracy? I think democracy is really a tremendous idea, and as soon as we see it work, I'll feel a lot better about it. But democracy can't work unless the electorate truly reflects the makeup of the population. When only certain people vote, then you don't have democracy. Mm -hmm. but, but I mean, you are a musician, at least you want to be a musician, and then you say, always talk about politicians and want to be an expert on politics. I mean, how, does that work together? 
well, I'm not an expert on politics at all. I'm hardly even an expert on music. I'm just a guy who came to Sweden and wound up getting interrogated by a couple of geeks. <laughs> geeks. Well, still, you have had a campaign uh, this year to get people to register to vote on your tour in America. How does that go together with uh, this negative attitude against politicians? Answer that if you can. Well, it's very easy because in order to have democracy, you have to have an electorate which represents the, the actual makeup of the population. And if a certain age bracket, namely 18 to 25, is not registered, then you don't have a balanced electorate and therefore a weak democracy. Hmm. I mean, uh, you seem to be very obsessed with this politic business, but this is typical for you to have some kind of homemade opinion that only you have. I mean, here in Europe we know better because we have culture. Let's now go straight into your anti-human attitude, which is most evident in your music. In the recent years you have more and more started to play machine music, like the album Jazz From Hell, and less and less with real musicians. But when you did release an album with the London Symphony Orchestra playing your music. You do it only to prove that machines play better than human beings. Don't you realize that you lose the human warmth? Well, I mean, uh, I've experienced many different forms of human warmth, including this interrogation. <clears throat> and I would say that human warmth has its charm, but then again, a well-built and well-operated machine can also be very charming too. Uh, do you think that it's better to play with machines than with human beings? Well, you don't really play with the machine, the machine sort of plays it for you. It's two different things. Isn't this a very trendy opinion in these days? Uh, probably, yeah. And a very cynical approach to the matter. Please go on. Yeah. Mr. Frank Zappa, rock and roll music has made you a millionaire, and you have even said that I'm a capitalist. Still, you are ext extremely negative and arrogant about rock culture. In a Norwegian magazine called Pulse in 1986, you said that musicians don't know anything about music history. And you've also said that uh, the only thing that is positive with uh, rock music is that it has done so much for oral sex. I mean, shouldn't you be more thankful and and appreciate the rock business which has given you so much money more than that. Well, as an arrogant individual, I don't think that that's necessary at all. So you, you uh, actually confess that you're an arrogant individual? Well, I'm happy to be an arrogant individual. Does that make you feel good? Is that a good way of actually... I, of course it is. It's a wonderful way to be. <laughs> but, but, I mean, isn't rock culture something more today? After having... Well, actually, rock culture today is pretty much a failure in encouraging oral sex. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the big problem with rock culture. Well, it's one of the, yeah, it's one of the things that's wrong with it today. I mean, it's, uh, you know, the sexual emphasis has fallen out of the music quite a bit in the last year or so. Could you be so kind and maybe develop on a, a, some other problems with the rock music today? Uh, aside from the fact that it would tend to put you to sleep? Oh, yeah. and, and the people who actually help you to become a multimillionaire with rock music, like the journalists, you claim that they can't write for uh, people who can't read about musicians who can't play. I mean, I don't think that it's been scientifically proved that a journalist ever helped me to earn a nickel. Hmm. Well, you seem to have a special kind of scientific approach. That's uh, one thing I can say. Well, go on, comrade Max. In your video that you have produced called Does Humor Belong in Music, you describe yourself as follows. I'm not re a religious fanatic. I don't use drugs. I'm reasonably sane. I'm neither a Republican nor a Democrat. But for the rest of mankind, you have said in a magazine called Musician, Player and Listener magazine 1982, I used to think that people were stupid. Now I can prove it. Well, prove it then. Oh, very simple. <clears throat> Many people have stated scientifically that hydrogen is the building block of the universe because hydrogen is the most plentiful element and I maintain that stupidity is the building block of the universe because it appears to be more plentiful than hydrogen. This is some kind of Californian hippie special scientific approach. I don't know what, how you can back up that statement, but I guess it's typical of you just uh, uh, coming up with this. Uh, it's, it's in phase with arrogance. It's yeah. in it. You, you. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> well <laughs> and I, I say we, I agree. Are you it. trying to tell me that arrogance is against the law in Sweden? Well, it's not necessary. Have you ever seen a Volvo commercial? 
uh, no, in we are not Sweden we don't to have commercials, commercials actually, we are free from this. But I mean, you, you must admit that this attitude of yours can't help people understanding each other over the borders. Well, probably not. But then again, it's not going to hurt either. Okay, if there's one thing we have proved here today is that you are extremely arrogant and we will scrutinize you in the future. And hereby we declare this interrogation closed. Why, it's been a great pleasure. Hmm.